So of course, if we're doing cylindrical coordinates, we're doing it so that we can set up integrals, right? So we're going to need to know what the Jacobian looks like for the cylindrical coordinate transform. So here's our symbology for the Jacobian. And so we set this one up, remember, as the determinant of a matrix, where we have the partial derivatives. So we'll do the um, first partial of, oh, here, let me write off to the side what exactly we're doing. We're doing x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta, and z equals z. Okay, so take the first one, and, well, that was depressing. Take the first one, and then take its derivatives with respect to each of those three variables, r, theta, z. So we have uh, cosine theta, and then minus r sine theta, and then zero, because it ain't got no z. And then we take r sine theta, and it goes across the second row. And so we pick up uh, sine theta, r cosine theta, and zero, because it doesn't have any z either. And then for z, uh, dz dx is zero, dz dy is zero, dz dz is one. So we have this guy. And so if you've seen the uh, shortcut for computing uh, determinants, it works like this. You take sort of copies of uh, the first two rows, called them ghost copies or whatever, and then <coughs> you look at the products that you obtain uh, by going down at a diagonal, and in each of these cases it's zero except for this first one. And you add those guys up, and then you uh, look at what you get by going up at an angle, so we have this one, and this one, and this one. So we have 0 plus 0 um, minus r sine squared theta. And then you subtract the orange from the blue. And so the double negatives cancel. The r factors out. And then you're left with cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. And so you just get r. And so it looks exactly like the one we saw when we did polar coordinates. Just like everything else, it's a cheap rip off of polar, right? So from time to time, it'll happen that you want to set up polar coordinates in, sorry, uh, cylindrical coordinates about a different axis. So for example, suppose you want to do an integral and it involves a paraboloid going sideways, opening around the y-axis, like that one example we saw back in, I think it was clip 15.6.5. Um, I think it also came up in, or maybe it was a 15.6.8, one of those two. Those are, those are the two that we talked about uh, cylindrical briefly in, in, in previous, uh, here, I'll, I'll make a note uh, so you can check if you want to. 15.6.5 uh, and 15.6.8, those are previous clips that touched upon the notion of cylindrical coordinates. Um, <clears throat> so maybe instead of doing cylindrical coordinates like uh, we did in this previous case, we instead want y to be the axis. So for that type of situation, we'd have x equals r cosine theta as before, but now we say y equals y, and z equals r sine theta. Uh, now if we go to set up the corresponding Jacobian, it ends up that we get exactly the same thing. Uh, so this time, let's see, we're going to do dr, dy, and d theta. OK. So um, let's see. Set up our determinant, and we get uh, cosine theta. And then derivative with respect to y is 0. And then with respect to theta is minus r sine theta. So I'm differentiating x there. Now I differentiate y dy dx is 0, dy dy is 1, dy dz is 0. And then uh, taking r sine theta, our function for z, um, I get a sine theta and a 0 and a minus uh, r, no, sorry, no minus. 
I get an R cosine theta. And so when I do the zip, 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 zap, 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 slashes again, this one is going to give me R cosine squared theta. And then I'm going to get zero from this one. And then I'm also going to get zero from this one because of these zeros over here. Going in the other direction, I get this one right here, minus R sine squared theta. And then this is going to be zeros. And then this one is going to pick up those zeros. So it'll die as well. And we end up with exactly the same formulation that we saw in the previous step. So this is actually, there's a kind of a magic property of determinants underlying this here. It turns out that they're invariant with respect to uh, changes of orientation like this. Um, but yeah, so you never ever again have to compute the Jacobian for cylindrical coordinates because it will always be R.